The Cowboys Imperial Report first. Me watching the Cowboys win live. There it is. The Dallas Cowboys go to 2-1 in the NFC East. Third behind the Philadelphia Eagles and the New York Giants. As we beat the Carolina Panthers on Monday Night Football for our first win in our stadium. $20 worth of pizza. Well spent. Um... Uh, a jersey bet with 15 Go Panthers. Well spent. It's absolutely wonderful. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, let's talk about halftime. You want to talk about halftime? I've got to be honest with you. I was a little worried about halftime. I really was. Because the, the, our defense was lifeless. Our offense wasn't didn't seem like they could get anything going, aside from the run, which we abandoned for some weird reason. I was real worried because I thought that, because what the last time I saw the Cowboys play like that, with that lifeless, kind of uninspired, uh, nonchalant attitude, was in Philadelphia when we got beat 44 to 6. Not as we were getting beat 44 to 6, but like in the early, you know, couple of plays when Buck Alter got that touchdown. I know when these guys are lifeless. All right. So, uh, so there it is here on Cowboys Imperial Report. 15 go Panthers. I will take a large, uh, a large. Blue, I don't have a blue jersey, but the large blue jersey, you, you should know it. Your Carolina Panthers made us wear it in our two playoff appearances in Bank of America Stadium, once in 97 and another time in 2004. You should know those games pretty well. Um, so, yeah, large DeMarcus Ware cursed blue jersey. Okay, and I'll send you my... Uh, my address and so forth. So, you know, because we don't want to give it out to any creeps here on the internet. I mean if you're looking for a website that provides insights on the NFL, NBA, MLB, and every sport in between, you can do no better than viewfromthebench.com. It also has a forum where you can chat with other fans. Viewfromthebench.com, a proud supporter of Cowboys Imperial Report. All right, uh, that's that's real good. Good job, guys. You could have lost the game, which is what I was afraid was going to happen. Good gosh, the first half was putrid. It absolutely was. It, it, it was it was very mediocre, and it had to be worried because I thought, oh no, we're going to lose it again. You know, that's what I was thinking. I wasn't as animated as I was during the Giants game. You know, because I figured. Either we're going to lose or we're going to win, and that's going to be the end of it, and I'm not going to lose my cool. And I wasn't going to lose my cool. Um, so I'm glad that we're 2-1. and one. You know, it's like what Lou Holtz said, and I know he sucked as a, the Jets coach, but he was real good as a college coach. He says, a coach is supposed to win the games he's supposed to win and some that he shouldn't. Well, this was a game that, we, that the Cowboys should have won, and we won. And so that's all there is to it. We have a lot. We have some things to work on. Uh, primarily, I think that penalties are still an issue. Flozell Adams, uh, John Phillips uh, that was a rookie mistake. Um, the defense came alive right there in the second half. We got to bring that. We've got to bring our behinds to Denver next week. All right. We've got to get that defense going, and I, I, let's pause for a second before we talk about that. I want to show you something cool here that happened at the beginning of the game. Go ahead and roll it. Here. I don't know if I can convey the beauty, but from my couch, I can see a wonderful sunset and Cowboys football. Isn't that sunset beautiful? I mean, honestly. So I see a sunset in Cowboys football. All right, yeah, that was that that was pretty sweet. Uh, at the beginning of the game, I thought this is so beautiful. I get to see Cowboys football on the left and a gorgeous sunset on the right. You know, so uh, getting back to Denver though, I really want to beat Denver. Um, 
which another thing too, I'll be talking to one of my professors this week on Cowboys Imperial Report about uh, the Broncos game because he's a Broncos fan. Watch me get an F for my comments about the Broncos that somehow slipped back to him. Uh, let's be nice and give a promotion. Here's the TKO show. I want you to go check it. Hey, come on! All right, there. Are you guys on Elmer's? Uh, what is this? They can't get the, uh, the link right. So, anyway, I want you to check this, this out, the TKO show, uh, run by the Packers fan, Kyle's, uh, Kyle Olson from my last uh, Cowboys Imperial Report, the Packers. I'm going to work on something interesting with him for the Cowboys-Packers game in November. Stay tuned until then. And uh, let's do more yelling. This is from the pregame show of uh, uh, me, Sean Johnson. Good and roll is she, Sean Johnson. All right, so I'm sitting here watching BSPN, you know, because the Cowboys are playing on BSPN tonight. And I just want you to take a listen to the stupidity of Keyshawn Johnson. In October, not so many, four to two member heard a year ago. In November, unbelievable. 11 and 1, and then comes December and January, including the playoffs and the 5 and 10. So, that doesn't mean he can't change it, but there it is. So, where is Tony Romo in this stage of his career, Keith? He's been a pro bowler, he's been to the playoffs. But he doesn't win much late thus far. Where is he? I think all the excuses about Tony Romo is over with now. I think when you look at him, he's been celebrated as this big-time quarterback at an elite level. Well, he hasn't played at an elite level. I think he's played at a marginal above, a little bit above average quarterback in the NFL. He needs to turn on, turn it on if he wants to get to that. And when you look back at a lot of things, to me, I played with him for two years. So I have to... Hold on, hold on, hold on. What do you mean you played with him for two years? He was... Uh, he was the backup quarterback in 05, and he was the third string quarterback in 04. What do you mean you played with him? He threw you a ball? Get him. Yeah. But let, you, you got to listen to more of this. It's, uh, it's unbelievable. I had the opportunity to kind of be around and be in a locker room with him, and everything was just cool. Everything was just one of those deals where, you know what, I'm doing just enough. To get by. Now I'm starting to see that a little bit, Coach. As a oh, you, and, and I, you're making that up. He's making this up out of whole cloth. Can you believe what you're listening to? Let, let me tell you something. If Tony Romo was just doing enough to get by, do you think that he would have been able to beat out Drew Henson? I stand by those words. The, the, these bums. I, I, it's like the view. It's the view. When you think about it, Disney owns ABC and BSPN, right? So on one show in the morning on ABC, they got the view with the with the, you know the the hens around the desk. I was in a, I was mut Sunday NFL clown around and Monday NFL clown around. Any different to me? It's the view, but to a testosterone driven. Oh gosh, how did this happen? You see what I'm talking about, bum. All right, that's it. I got a, I got enough to do. But the, the good news is tomorrow we don't have to put up with Schadenfreude out of our snotty co-workers or the snickers in our classrooms. <sighs> there is justice in the world in week three of the NFL. It is week three, right? Yeah, in week three of the NFL. All right, God save the cow. Oh, what did I want to say? I do. I don't know if you know this, but I do a blog talk radio show tomorrow at 6 p.m. Central, and here's the link to it. And check it out if you want to. Call in. We'll have the live chat open. Whatever. Uh, there it is. I've been meaning to promote that. I just promoted it. God save the Cowboys. Good.